afternoon once again boys and girls who are just joining with us let me welcome you to our grade six virtual students session this is going to be an exciting session and this should be your number one virtual session for this region boys and girls i'm sure you're not new to our virtual sessions and so I'm looking forward to a very engaging and a very fruitful session with you. For those of you who are joining on the YouTube platform, let me also welcome you to our virtual student session as we prepare for our upcoming exams, boys and girls. I assure you, this session will be most beneficial to you, boys and girls. Let's get going. I want you to just type the name of your school for those of you who are just joining and your name as well as you represent your school today. Also, students, we have with us in our chat space, we have, you have your own personal assistant and here with us is Mrs. Itania Johnson, a math specialist who will be with you in the chat throughout this session. All right, so let's get the ball, the ball rolling. All right, so for those of you who are, are new to the space and for those of you who are just joining, I'm going to ask you to mute your microphones and you can also turn your cameras off. All right, great. Make sure that your cameras are off and your microphones. When you are ready to speak, I'm sure you will be asked to unmute. Boys and girls, you use the raise hand feature um, on this platform and surely Mrs. Simpson will be unmuting you. All right, boys and girls, let's get going. All right, so in today's session, we are going to be focusing on we're promoting critical thinking in our students as we navigate some task-based assessment. And so boys and girls, all that we're doing today is to promote critical thinking and to help you navigate yourself through some very interesting tasks. We also want to promote the making of connections between the different parts of problem. As we navigate this space, boys and girls, I want to remind you that you would have also been in receipt of the document that was sent to the school so you can have a go at it before today. And so Can't hear based you. on what you would have been doing, we are going to go through that with you today. For those of you who didn't get a chance to see that paper, to see the task, to try it with your, your classmates or even to try it with your teachers, 
still, this is the space for you and we are going to make it as engaging as possible for you. Boys and girls, let's get going. All right, so in today's session, we're going to be focusing on a task, right? And the task is surrounding the grade six netball and the football competition fundraiser. So that is the title of our task today. All right, before I get the ball rolling, boys and girls, I just want you to just give me a thumbs up in the chat if you have seen yeah. the task or if you have done the task before. All right, Mrs. Simpson, are you seeing anything in the chat just yet? Not seeing anything in the chat as yet. Um, yes, I'm seeing persons responding. Uh, they're all responding. Majority of the persons are saying yes. And right. Uh, right. But you have one or two of them saying, no, sir. No, no, no. Not at all. All right. So I'm I think sure the numbers this... um, would be equal. Some would have seen and some would not. Um, all right. Have seen. All right. So I'm seeing is, just is, a second, Mr. Will Williams. I'm seeing <laughs> one person saying that she's not hearing. I keep having to mute the person who is Motorola. That person seemed to want to just disturb the, the afternoon's process. Um, just asking person to turn their mics up, turn um, not the mics, their speakers because others are hearing quite fine. Right, and you're hearing me quite well yourself on your yes, end, right? Yes, All right, so let's get going. So for those of you who have seen this task and have tried it before, because we sent it out for you to try now, um, that is, I, I'm sure you're going to see um, mathematics in different ways today. You may try it one way. No. We may try it one way. Somebody else may try it another way. But all in all, boys and girls, we are going to learn to appreciate how mathematics work in this form. For those of you who have not seen it, we're going to make it very engaging for you so that you are able to follow and participate as much as you can. I want to pick up all the schools in Region 5, Manchester and St. Elizabeth who is representing today. So let's get going once again. All right, boys and girls. So here we have Black Forest Academy. Uh, that's right. And, and Black Forest Academy wants to participate in the upcoming grade six netball and fundraising competition. Now, in order for them to participate, the school needs to purchase gears and equipment for the students to participate. Obviously, they would need gears and all of that to participate in a competition of this sort, right? And remember, it's netball and football, you know, so we need some gears to represent boys and girls. The leadership of the school, and when we talk about leadership of the school, we're talking about the principal, the administration, okay. right? The teachers, all of these persons. They have given each grade a challenge, each grade a challenge to raise $50,000, boys and girls, towards helping the teams. All right. Now, the grade six class. And imagine this, this is your grade six class. Your grade six class decided to sell biscuits to raise funds for the team. And bear in mind, boys and girls, you see how much money we have to raise? How much money? Hmm. I wonder who knows. Type the answer in the chat if you know how much money we are raising. Sir. Sure. It's awesome, sir. All right. Excellent. All right, it, it, keep your microphones muted and you can respond in the chat as well. But very yes, good. No, we uh, are raising $50,000 to help the teams to buy equipment and gears to participate in netball and football competition. All right. Now, in this task, we have three 
sections. And we want you to focus on these three sections because there are three important sections and all of the sections are connected in some way or another. So boys and girls, in order for you to be selling biscuits, the tasks are, you are going to be representing the survey data on a bar graph. Of course you know what a bar graph is. Of course you know what data is. And of course you know how to represent uh, using bar graph. We are going to go it. into some of that with you today. The second part, boys and girls, is to determine the types of biscuits the grade six should sell. Hmm. How do we know what type of biscuits we should sell? Well, as we go through the task, you are going to see what people prefer. And then that maybe that could help us to, to choose the biscuits we need to sell. Also, as we are able to choose the biscuits we want to sell, we have to be able to calculate how much money we make from all the biscuit sales, right? And all of you here are, 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 are budding entrepreneurs, business people, and I'm sure you are going to be owning your business someday and maybe you're going to so be could selling you stuff and you're going to want to know your profits, all right? Okay, boys and girls, so let's get going. What time does now, this end? So task one of this is that you are to survey 100 students. Do you know what a survey is? I want somebody to unmute and tell me what they think a survey is. So it says 100 students Sir. were surveyed. Yes, go ahead. Sir. Sir. Is that John Perry? John Perry? Or is that sure, Samsung? Sure, sure, sure. Sure. Uh, Sir, no not, to be, not to be so rude, but when does this end again? We're hoping no to end have? by 5.30. The late. Yes, sir. Sir. Serving when you ask a series of questions. So in a survey, I'm getting bits and pieces from you boys and girls. So in a survey, of course, there are some questions, right? So you, you know what a survey is, and that is brilliant. So in this survey, I want you to look at these. In the survey that you conducted, most students preferred Holly's chocolate digestive. Uh, Mrs. Simpson, could you just unmute the students whose microphone is still open? So could I speak, please? Is that, who is that speaking? Nadia. Is that Nadia? It. All right. So we're going to ask you to keep the microphones muted until we ask you to 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 speak and we are going to choose who who to speak because boys and girls there are so many of you on the platform we can't take all the responses but if you want to respond and if you want us to respond to you you can type your answers in the chat as well not all of us can talk at the same time because it would be confusion so we want to minimize that as much as possible so the chat is the space for you to respond. All right, boys and girls, so there are conditions. You have completed your survey and you, you want to determine which biscuits the students in the school prefer. Now, 100 students were surveyed. And from that oh. survey, you have determined that most students preferred Polly's chocolate digestive. Alongside that, I'm to um understand this. I didn't get that question. 
Oh, Excuse me, sir. Yes, I'm trying ahead. to find who is talking, Mr. Williams. Hey. Persons keep just talking or butting in. Right, boys and girls. Remember to keep your microphone muted if you want to speak. You have to raise your hand. Okay. Use the raise hand feature. Or All type right, the so question in the chat. Or type the question in the chat. Beautiful. So we're going to continue. So most students prefer Polly's chocolate digestive. But the least preferred biscuit that was um, showed in the survey was Sims wheat biscuit. Hmm. I don't like wheat biscuit either. I, I believe most the least persons um, chose Sims wheat biscuit. But then again, the survey showed boys and girls that the number of students preferring extra chocolate co coconut cookie is 30%. 30% of those students who prefer Polly's chocolate digestive. A lot of information in this one. So, there are also some students who like none of the biscuits. And I have some friends who don't like some biscuits. And when you do a survey, you're going to find that some persons don't like some things, right? So, let's that sink in. And that's the data you're going to be deriving from all of this. So, boys and girls... Remember the conditions? Yep. There are 100 students in the survey. Most students preferred Polly's biscuit. The least number of um the least student number of students prefer Sims with biscuit. And then boys and girls, we have a whopping 30% of students who like the coconut cookies. 30% of Polly's chocolate digestive. So those Excuse who me, like Polly, Polly's digestive, 30% of the students also like it. All right. You have to bear these conditions in mind because we are going to be using them again. Nadia, go ahead. Miss, I was saying, sir, I was sir. saying um, if you have to draw a Venn diagram in order to figure out the answer. All right. That's a very good question. And I, I really appreciate that question. It means that you're thinking. But in this situation, we're only going to be doing what is asked of us. All right? So remember, before this slide, we said you're going to be conducting a survey. You're going to be representing the data using what type of graph? Type in the chat what type of graph. We said a bar graph, not a Venn diagram, but a bar graph. All right. Great. So I want you to remember these conditions because you're going to use it right throughout this task, you know. And for those of you who did the task already, you would have realized that you always have to bear these things in mind. You can't just read it and forget it. But if you did forget it, you know where to find it back. And so that is also very good for you to always know where to find your information, the important information. All right. Now, now, boys and girls, you know the conditions, all right? So if you know the conditions, I'm going to ask one student to open his or her microphone and tell me what were the numbers you choose. It says use the information in the survey to create the possible data set for this. I want you to tell me. Yes, sir. I'm seeing Nela's hand up. Let's go with Nela. Asking Nela to unmute. Go ahead. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right, Nela, are you ready to share? Yes, miss. Go ahead, please. 
Oh, I am Go ahead. Sir, please, sir. All right. So remember, this is the question, right? Hmm. So this is the question. It says use the information to create the possible data set for the survey. And we have given you a table. So we want to know how many is from your survey, how many students like creamy butter biscuit, Polly's chocolate. I don't, because I can't sort this out now. I'm doing something. Sims, Sims wheat biscuit. Mrs. Simpson, the microphone is open. Extra coconut cookie and none of the biscuits. Right? So... Is that Mishika or Mishiki? Where? Who is going? Nela. Nela. Yes. So, Nela, talk with me. Did in the survey did did anybody like creamy butter biscuits? Oh. Hmm? No, sir. What was mentioned in the survey? Or the information you got from the survey was that there was 100 persons. Agree? No, none of them like me butter biscuits, sir. It didn't they, say they, nothing about it. They didn't say anything about it. All right. Very good. No, Very good response. All right. But did they say anything about Polly's chocolate? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm I'm not. What did they say about Polly's chocolate? Right, the information is right in front of you on the screen, boys and girls. So remember, we said you have to remember the information. If you don't remember, you have to go back. So, if more students like Polly's chocolate, about how many students you think that would be? Type your answer in the chat. Sir, type your answer in the chat. I know you're representing Craighead today, and big up to all the Craighead students in the building. Mr. Williams, I am seeing the chat lighting up. I am seeing 50, one person saying four, one person, um, two persons are saying 40. I'm seeing 40, I'm seeing 60, 69. 40, All right. 60, 50, 50, 40, so, so, 50, up to 10. All right. So majority of students are saying 40 and 40. over, right? Yes. All right. So we are going to, to dive a little bit deeper into it. No. How many students do you think like wheat biscuit? Oh, that's good. Sir, I'm going to touch again and see 10 and 40. Sir, can I answer that question, sir? Go ahead, Nelia, but I wish you could type in the chat as well. Okay, sir, so I'll just type in the chat. Right, but you can go ahead since you're open. Sir, so which biscuit again, sir? Sorry, sir. Tim's Wheat Biscuit. <laughs> How many students do you think like Sims with this kid? About 10. All right. Yes, sir. That, all right. And, and remember, if this is the least number, the, the, the Sims with this kid is the least preferred, it could mean that could be one, could be two, could be three. But we don't know just yet, don't it? Yes, all sir. Right. sir. We are going to figure out how many students. And we are going to figure out how your data set look, because everybody will have something different, you know, or can have something different. All right. But we are going to see what is workable. So let's go. I'm going to be typing on screen, but I want one student who have completed this task before to open your microphone and share with me the numbers you have in your on your table 
Shakira Riley's hand is up. Shakira Riley's hand is up. So we'll ask Shakira to go ahead. Shakira, you have the floor. Shakira, you have the floor. Shakira, you have the floor. So we'll ask Shakira to go ahead. All right. So, mm -hmm. all right. Who is, who is on? Who's speaking? Um, there is also Kassan. Cassandra so Smith. Cassandra Smith. Cassandra. Me, sir. All right. All right. So, Cassandra, I need your background to be as quiet as you can. So, have you completed this task already? Yes, sir. All right. So, in order to complete this task, what did you do first? Do you remember what you did first? While we're waiting for Cassandra to respond, we want to also remember those on YouTube joining with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Type your responses in the chat. So, is there someone else who wants to unmute? We have Nat Natal Natalia. There is Natalia. Natalia as well. Her hand is up. She would like to speak. Go ahead, Natalia. Always. Always happy to hear from you all. Come on, Natalia, represent us today. Natalia, are you there? Seems as if she has, uh, all right, Naila's hand is, is obsolete. Uh, we can allow Naila to go. All right, Naila. Is it Naila or Naila? She seemed to have gone quiet as well, Mr. Williams. All right. Let me so, see what's happening over in the chat. No, right. I want um, somebody to unmute and talk with me. No, they're doing other things in the chat. All right. So let's get it going. So, boys and girls, we are in this space now. But... In order to populate this table with numbers, we have to bear a few things in mind. Now, we have to remember how many students are in the survey. Right, there are 100 students in the survey. So all the numbers we populate in this table must all add up to, let me hear it, 100. Great. So, based on that information, we know we cannot exceed a number. When we add up the, the numbers in the table, it cannot exceed 100 and it cannot be less than 100. So, we have to move now from what we know and then use what we know to figure out the things we don't know. But if you said most students prefer Polly's chocolate, what number would you put on your table? You said it before, and I'm going to use the number that was most popular. So we are seeing students in the chat saying 50. So I'm going to use 50. Mrs. Simpson. That's yes, what you're seeing in the 50, chat. Right. 50 is the most dominant number so right. far. So if there is, let's look at Sims Wheat Biscuit. It says the least number of students prefer that. How many students could we put in that part of the table for, for Sims Wheat Biscuit? All right. So I'm seeing 19, 20, 15, 11. I'm seeing numbers below um below 30. 20. All right. So if right. I were to use 20, all right, let's use 20. If we use the 20 that is in the chat, then we go to the next condition. It says the number of students preferring extra coconut cookies is 30% of the number 
of students who like college chocolate? Hmm. What is 30% of 50 for college chocolate? Who knows what 30% of that is? Tapping into your percentage math, no, you know, man. We All want right, to know so I'm 30%. Seeing in the chat, I'm seeing 15. All I am right. seeing, let's continuing. Everybody's right. saying 35, somebody's saying 35, but most of the answers coming up, Mr. Williams, is 15. All right. So, boys and girls, I want you to look back at the least number of biscuits. It seems with biscuit, but then you are saying there is 15. Would that be correct? Look at Sims Wheat Biscuit. If Sims Wheat Biscuit is liked by the smallest number of persons, does 20, would 20 be that number? Do you think 20 would be that number? What would be an appropriate number or a suitable number if it is the least? Bear in mind, extra coconut is 15. If extra coconut is 15, it this table is showing me that extra coconut is the least. But we're saying that some wheat biscuit is the least. So what other number could be used to satisfy that condition? In the chat, we are seeing seven. We are seeing, seeing seven, nine, ten. Um, All right. Ten. So we are, we are going to assign Boy, the chat a number. Just lighting up, Mr. Mr. Williams. We are going to assign a number now. All right. Based on the data on the table, is Sims Wheat Biscuit the least preferred biscuit now? Is it? Simply yes or no. All right. So, so far, it is the least. All right. Now, it says some students like, hmm. Some students like none of the biscuit. About how many students do you think we could assign that condition to? In the back of our minds, we always have to be thinking how many students in total? How right, many so students seeing, in total? I'm seeing uh, the numbers going so quickly. I'm seeing four, five. Um, all right, so if I put five there, I'm using the round numbers that you are using, boys and girls, right? No, those friendly numbers. So, so far, how many students are on the table, are represented on the table? So 50 plus 10 plus 15 plus five, how many students so far would be represented on the table? Somebody says 80. I want to big up that student who gave the answer first. Samsung S10 in the meeting there. And Damien. I'm seeing Damien Antonio. I'm seeing Zaire. Wow. It's too, we have some brilliant students with us today. Yes, I All agree right, with boys and girls. Yeah. Students, if we have 80 students on the table being represented now, how many students do you think, even though it wasn't mentioned, but it is there, how many students could we assign to creamy butter biscuit? Oh my, big up to Z Zaire, Amir, all of those students. Talk to me, what's going on in the chat over there? Okay, I'm seeing Joshua Price. Um... All the students, they are saying 20. 20 seem to be the dominant and um, answer, All right. 20. I feel so proud of you, boys and girls. I want to just say excellent job so far. Now that we have populated the table, are we sure? Let's scan back through the conditions quickly. Is Sims Wheat Biscuit the least preferred biscuit on the table now? What is the least preferred biscuit on the table? I'm going to catch some of you now in a month. Hmm. 
Mr. Williams, I am asking for you to ask the question again. Let's see what right. they are saying. I'm seeing. All right, boys and girls. I want to ask you the question again. Which biscuit on our table is least preferred? All right, so in the chat, I am seeing Sims wheat, Sims wheat, extra coconut. Um, Sims wheat seem to be the most popular answer at this point. All right. So, boys and girls, I want to bring your attention to something. The, 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 the one that says none of the biscuits, that's not a type of biscuit, you know, no, but it is telling us five persons, five students don't like any of the four biscuits above. But that doesn't mean that it is it's that number, even though it's the smallest number, it's not telling us that it is the least like biscuit. So we have to bear that in mind, you know. So we have to just compare the biscuits them themselves and look at the numbers assigned to the biscuits, right? And when we look at the numbers, we are seeing that 10 is smaller than all the other three numbers and so it is the least preferred biscuit now when i go inside i need to find the total and i want somebody to tell me the total when they add it up i'm sure i went ahead and did it on screen so the total number of students in the survey when i add all these numbers up i'm going to get 100 and that 100 represents what? What does that 100 represent, students? Type your answer in the chat. What does the 100 represent? Hmm, never thought about it, did you? What does the 100 represent? Okay, the chat uh, is lighting up, Mr. Right. Mr. Will no, um, Mr. Williams, may we pause a minute? I the chat is being used for anything else other than what is required at this time. So I'm going right. to ask that I am trying not to have to remove any student from the meeting. So we're asking the students to cooperate, please. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Simpson, boys and girls. This is a record recorded meeting whatever you do is being recorded and can and will be held against you so be careful of what you do in an online space we have to be very responsible for and when we use online platforms be very careful boys and girls so Let's just focus on our survey task and let's just do this so that in the couple of days to come, you're going to mash up your exam and you're going to say, sir, I benefited from the session and sir, I did well. All right, so let's continue. So now that we have populated the table with your responses, I am going to be showing you a presentation sample. So this is another sample that I'm showing you, right? And from this sample, I'm showing you that 25, well, 50 students also like what you have would represent the most students who preferred college chocolate. Then we look at the list and we say four students like Sims wheat biscuit. And then we said six like none, 15 like extra coconut, and then the rest was assigned to creamy butter biscuit, which is 25. All in all, we had 100 students. Now, throughout this session, I'm going to be using the presentation sample to work through the task. But I'm also going to be asking, as we just did a while ago, for your responses, and I'm going to be populating the worksheet just the same. All right. So your input is very important to this session. And your input is going to be taken into consideration. All right. So let's go. 
Now, we did the survey, we know the information and look at my table here. My table has numbers and I want to represent those numbers using what type of graph again? I'm listening for the answer. I'm looking for the answer. Somebody said line graph. Nathan, line graph. Joshua and Deshaun says bar graph. I'm seeing bar, bar graph. graph. All right. So I'm using multiple screens here. So I'm kind of seeing what, what is happening. But if you know what a bar graph is, there are a few very important Four tan things that should be shown on a bar graph. And we can't forget them because they're so vital for us to be able to interpret and to read from a graph. All right. So for creamy butter biscuit, steam sweet biscuit, extra coconut crackers or biscuit, and Polly's biscuit and persons who don't like any biscuit at all, we are going to put that information on a bar graph before we begin. What are some things that should be on a bar graph? I want you to type your answers quickly in the chat. Mrs. Simpson, who is the first one out the block? Uh, Mr. Williams, we had to turn off the chat because of what was happening. So persons will have to raise their hand all and right we will unmute so i'm okay. seeing nadia nadia's hand is up so i'm going to ask nadia to unmute all right nadia that name is so popular it's coming up more than once so frequent nadia let's go are you able to unmute Seems as if Nadia is shy. Let's go to Kassan. Kassan is right. Shy. Nadia spoke to me earlier. Nadia, are you able to speak? Kassan, who is the next Cassandra person? Cassandra Smith is the next person. Her hand was Cassandra. up. Cassandra, are you here with us? All right, I'm just going down the line, Mr. Williams. We have Samoya Mori. Would you like to speak, Samoya? You can unmute your mic and speak. Go ahead. You can unmute. Oh, it seems as if they are shying away, Mr. Williams. All right. Anybody can unmute at this time. Just unmute. Just one person. All right. So as we await the students to respond via microphone, I'm hoping that we have not disabled their their um, microphones as well. But there are a few things we need to know about bar graphs. And I'm going to use this opportunity to share that information. So while our boys and girls are gearing up to draw their bar graph, look at this. A bar That's graph it. needs a... Oh, no. Akela speaking, Mr. Williams. Akela. <laughs> What's the question? Yeah. What What are some things we, we need to have on our bar graph? Numbers. numbers. All right. We can have numbers. Beautiful. And anything else? The name of the chips. The name of the chips. All right. Excellent. Anything and, else? And the number of the students. And the number of students. All right, let's see. I don't want you to, 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 to um, hang up just yet. All right, don't mute just yet. So let's see if that's so. The number of students, that word, number of students and, num and biscuit. So when we look at the vertical axis, the vertical axis is the one that's going up. And that one is showing us number of students. The one that's going across from left to right here, that is called the vertical axis. And it is also labeled with the types of biscuits. Biscuit. Beautiful. So that's what you're referring to, right? 
Yes, yes sir. All right, because we have the name of the biscuits on, on there as well. Awesome. So you were talking about some numbers. I wonder where those numbers are. Where should those numbers be? Vertical axis. Vertical axis. All right. So the vertical axis, of course. You are correct. So proud of you, mm -hmm. all right. So we are going to go up by, we're starting at zero and then five, then 10. What number are we going, going up by? Five. Awesome. You're representing your, your, your schoolmates so well today. I'm so proud of you. Which school are you coming from today? Rose Hall Primary and Infant School. Awesome. And Rose Hall is in St. Elizabeth? Yes, sir. Awesome. I'm sure your principal is so proud of you and your teachers. So proud of you. All right. You may just mute at this time. I'm looking forward to hearing from you again. Okay? All right. So now that we have all that we need on our table, well, on our graph, actually, we want to know put in our bars. As its name suggests, it's a bar graph, so it will have bars, all right? And so, Creamy Biscuit has 25 students. Polly's Chocolate Biscuit has a whopping 50 students liking that one. And let's look at the table again. Sims Wheat Biscuit, Oh, seems we biscuit. Only four persons like that one. An extra coconut, 15. And none of the students liked, um, well, none of the biscuits is represented by how many students? How many students didn't like any of the biscuits? Type your answer in the chat. All right, Joshua on the show. I'm seeing um sir. I'm seeing right, in the chat is. Ray Marquez Anderson six. is saying six. Mm -hmm. And Samaria Murray is also saying six. I'm realizing that some of the 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 chat is coming directly to me. So some person may not be able to see it. But I'm also bigging up those persons who have responded well. All right. So, boys and girls, let's continue. So far, you have populated your table. And from your table, you have developed your bar graph. All right. Now, what would be a suitable title for this bar graph? Mrs. Simpson. Which school is the first one to tell, give a suitable title for this bar graph? Hmm. Which school? Is it a Manchester school? Is it a St. Elizabeth school? The Bread Basket Parish? All right, so I'm seeing Nathan telling me number of biscuits liked. I'm seeing Navarro saying snack popularity. I'm seeing Ray Marquez Anderson saying bar graph showing the preference of the students. And um, Zachary saying favorite biscuits. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Simpson. And others are still popping in. Um, Arlan J, number of biscuits, Kayla, preferred biscuits. Students' favorite biscuits, the different preferences of the biscuits, that sort of thing. All number right. of students Thank who you. like different Thank types. Thank you, boys and girls. You see how Mrs. Sims is our personal assistant in our chat. She's on top of things. So I would like you to also be on top of your game as we navigate this task. Boys and girls, task two. What does task two say? It says, in bold, 
biscuit selection and sale. What do you think we're going to be doing? We're going to be selecting some biscuits now, right? So as part of these tasks, you know, boys and girls, there are some things that are placed in bold. Do you know why they're placed in bold? I know you do. They are placed in bold because they are things that you need to pay attention to. They tell you exactly what you should be doing. And so it is for you to note. And that's why it's in bold, right? Sometimes we underline them. Sometimes we bold them. Sometimes they're in italics, meaning that, you know, when they, the letters are a little bit slanted, right? So you have to pay attention to these important things, all right? So the parent association in this part of the task says, we are going to be donating 100 packs, 100 packs of any three biscuits the grade six decide to sell. Wow, this is impressive. So you're going to get a donation, boys and girls, of 100 biscuits of any three types of biscuit you choose. So, 100 packs, any three types of biscuits. Pay attention to this now. It says, use the information from the table and I want you to choose the three types of biscuits you want to sell. What three biscuits you have chosen? What three biscuits you want to choose to sell? Hmm. I know you have your preferences, boys and girls. So type your answers in the chat. What three biscuits you would want to sell? Is it Polly's biscuit? Is it Sims wheat biscuit? Is it extra coconut biscuit? Or is it creamy biscuit? What is your preference? What are the biscuits you want to sell? have to bear in mind, you know, boys and girls, that we're selling these biscuits for a reason. And the reason is we want to participate in the netball and football competition and we have to save money to buy the gears and equipment. So here we have 100 biscuits. So here's another table for you to populate. Which three biscuits you are going to use or choose, very important for you now, you know. All right. Wesley Preparatory School on top of things. Welcome and keep in tuned. All right. So how many packs of biscuits? Of course, PTA says 100 biscuits we're giving you. But it's three different kind of biscuits we're giving you. But in total, there must be 100. So. If I were to use the information from this table to guide me in how I choose my biscuits, then what would it be? I'm seeing I'm in the chat. Oh, go ahead. Yes, I'm, see I'm seeing a few answers in the chat too. But in order for you to choose these biscuits, boys and girls, you just have to tell me, Choose your biscuits and tell me why you chose those biscuits. How did you choose those biscuits? I'm waiting. So. All right. So I'm seeing. Um, I'm seeing. Kimani Spence saying creamy, creamy butter biscuits. Cassidy is saying Polly's digestive. Uh, not seeing anymore. Tiandre right. says. Tiandre Carty says 50, 25, and 25. But Tiandre, right. you need to tell us which three biscuits you would choose. But she's Thank showing you. us how she would break it up. All right. And that is, that is smart thinking. So, boys and girls, you know it's 100 biscuits. You have your own table. But in this situation, I have a table here, but I'm giving you new information now. There's another table that's telling me how much the biscuit costs and how much I can sell it for. So 
if I were to look at the, the table I populated with the preferences, I could choose how, which biscuits I would sell. And then another person could look at the, the costing and look at the price for the biscuits and decide which one they want to sell. All right. So let me hear from you. Now, boys and girls, I'm going to use this opportunity. I'm going to use this opportunity for you to help me to populate this table. Now, which, what is the name of the biscuit you choose? And I, I'm going to type the answers in the chat. I want one person to open the microphone and share with me now. Who is ready to go? Which biscuit you would choose? Krishan's hand is up. Let's hear from Krishan. Krishan. Asking Krishan to go ahead and, and unmute and speak. All right. Krishan. It looks as if... All right. Let's move to the next person. Ishan. Ishan, hand is up. Ishan, would you like to speak? You can unmute and speak, Ishan. All right, so Ishan's mic is open, Mr. Williams. All right, Ishan, let's go. So I've chosen the creamy butter biscuit. All right, so I'm going to be typing it on screen. So you said creamy. Yes. Which other biscuit? The Polly's chocolate biscuit. Um, Polly biscuit. All right, which other one? And the extra coconut cookies biscuit. An extra coconut. All right. That's it? Yes, sir. So, what number would you think? So, how many biscuits are you getting again? We're trying to get 100 total biscuits. All right. But remember, it's PTA giving you the 100 biscuits. You know? So, you have to decide now how much of each biscuit you need to sell, but in all, all three, all three quantities must add up to one hundred. If I get over a hundred, would that be correct? No, sir. Something would be off, don't it? Yes, sir. What if, what if I add up these numbers that you're going to give me and they're less than hundred? You would have to um read the biscuits. You would have to revisit the numbers, right? And yes, find the best possible combination again. That will make 100. 100. All right. Awesome. Which school are you from, Ishan? Is that Ishan? Oh, Savannah Primary in St. Elizabeth. What you're saying? Okay. Representing well today. Big up yourself and big up your school and your principal and teachers, all who are tuning in today on our YouTube page. And those of you who are on or a Zoom platform. Once again, let me big you up. So, Ishan, let's get back to it. Creamy, how much is that? Creamy butter biscuits is the number of students that prefer it is 25, sir. All right, so here's a 25. Talk to me now, poly biscuit. It's 50. 50 poly, and how much for extra coconut? 15. And 15. All right. So if you were to add up these numbers, 50 and 25, how much is that? 75. 75 plus 15. 90. Are we at 100 yet? No, sir. So tell me what do you think is happening now? Are your numbers aligning to give you 100? No, sir. So you have to revisit the numbers and, and, and figure out what three numbers you are choosing that would add up to a hundred. Um, so what would you want to change? Which of the quantity you would want to change? 
Sir, could we change on the amount of creamy butter biscuits? How much would you want to add to creamy? One second, sir. How much did we get a while ago? How, how many you biscuits did you add up to? Sir. 90. So how much more I need for 100? 10. 10. So I just could put 10 on, on one of them. Which one of them you want to put the 10 on? Could we put it on the extra coconut? So how much would that be now? 25, sir. It was 25. How much is it now? If I erase the 25 and add 10 to the 25, how much would that be? Um, 35. So let's try the numbers again and see if they add up to 100. So what is 35 plus 50? Um, 85, sir. 85 plus 15? 100. All right. Excellent. Excellently done. Even though you made a mistake, you actually see where you made the mistake, don't it? Yes, sir. I was trying to say to add it on the extra coconut biscuits. But you could do that as well, you know. You could do that as well. But yes. it's your choice, right? You yeah. see, with these type of tasks, um, students, you have to make a choice, right? And in making your choice, you have to make sure it meets the condition. What was the condition in this case? It must be what? Total to 100. Total to 100. Superb. All right. So that is, that is excellent. That is excellent that you're able to identify your errors and correct them. All right. That is 100 points to you. All right. Good. So. So because you would have populated this table now, I am going to show you all of the things here. So we want to focus back on the number of biscuits. So in my presentation, I'm showing you what I would choose now, right? So you would choose those numbers for yourself and that would work. And you'd get 100, don't it? Let's see if this sample works too. 30 students like creamy, 50 likes poly, and 20 likes extra coconut cookies. Tell me if those numbers could work. Yes, sir, they could work. Why could they work? Because 30 plus 50 would equal to 80. And when you add 20 to 80, you get 100, which would be the total needed. All right. Now we are down to crunch time. You have chosen your biscuits. But guess what? What is the big question in front of you now? I'm going to ask all the other students. Thank you very much, Ishan. I'm going to ask all the other students who are on the platform now, both on Zoom and YouTube. Why did you choose those three biscuits to sell? Must be a reason why you choose those biscuits. Hmm. Going I'm to thinking. ask Dana Chambers to, to unmute and speak. Her hand is up. That's Dana Chambers. I'm giving her permission to unmute. Dana. Speak. Dana, 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 Dana. I'm waiting on Dana. Look like she has changed her mind. Let's go to Nathan. And while we're waiting, Nathan is about to speak, Mr. Williams. All right, Nathan. Yes, sir. All right. So, Nathan, why would you choose the biscuits you have chosen? What biscuits you chose? Did you do the task before? No, sir. All right, so if you were to use this one on, on screen here, 30, 50, and 20, why would you choose these biscuits to sell? Sir, because they were the most liked biscuits. They were the most liked biscuits. All right, where would you get that information from, Nathan? So I would get it from the bar graph. You could get it from the bar graph that you created, or you could get it from somewhere else. Where would that be? Anybody else want to chime in? Where would that be? Mm 
Davante is trying to wants to say something. His hand is up, and then I'm go going ahead. to go over to the chat when we're when he's through. So Davante, you can go ahead. Davante. Uh, miss. Yes, go, go ahead, ahead, Davante. Where could we find information to say? The on the table that supports our reason where would you find that the table in task one ah and and there's a table on screen here too right so if yes, he, if, if nathan said sir because these are the most like biscuits is creamy a like a, a a a preferred biscuit than all the others yes it is this is the second highest number is polly's a likeable biscuit. Yes, they said it's the most like biscuit. The, and then extra coconut would be the third on the list here. And of course, you could make your choice from using the student's preference, as well as you could look at probably the cost of it. Suppose you want to select the cheapest one because you said, boy, the cheapest ones, persons can afford the cheapest ones. But if you want to say, sir, I'm choosing the most expensive biscuits because I'm going to make the most money from them. All right. So there are a lot of reasons you could have come up with. Right, let me read some of what is in the chat. I'm seeing this survey, the survey. So I'm assuming they're speaking to the information that was given in the, in the table earlier on. Persons are saying the data from the survey. So yes, Mr. Williams, uh, the students are indeed agreeing with us. Uh, so they're getting the right. information Thank from the, the, the Thank survey. Thank you so done. much. Thank you so much for that. So in this section, boys and girls, still in part two here, you know, we're looking at if all the biscuits were sold off. How many biscuits? 100. If your 100 biscuits were sold off in the first week when you started selling, how much money would you make from these, these, this sale of all three biscuits? How would I find that information? Is there a way I could work it out? Hmm. For those who tried it before, I know you have a strategy. And I know you want to share it. How could I calculate how much money I made from selling these biscuits? Hmm. So. If I were to use my sample I gave you earlier, would I be able to determine how I work out? How much money I made by selling all of these biscuits? Hey, Sean is saying go back to the last question. Nikisha Smith is saying yes. Hey, Sean is saying yes. Rajan right. is saying multiply the number of biscuits by the selling price. All right, I'll seeing stop that right in the here. chat. I'll stop right there. Right, boys and girls. So you have gotten some free biscuits and you are tasked to sell them. So you're going to sell them for what the selling price is showing. So if you look at our fourth column on the table, you're seeing selling price per pack. So creamy butter biscuit is selling for $180, a whopping $180. The Sims Wheat Biscuit is selling for $150.25. Extra coconut. Oh my God. Extra coconut look like it's a yummy one, you know, man. $250 for that one, 75 cents. And Polly's Chocolate is selling for $100. One bills. So, boys and girls, I wonder if we can work out how much we're selling our biscuits for. So now on screen, we, we have chosen that we're going to sell creamy, poly, and extra coconut. So we have to work out how much money now, and we're going to follow the instruction of one of our students here today. So for this section, I'm going to ask someone to unmute and share with me. So I want we're going to, to ask... Yes, unmute John and Perry. share with me. John Perry can go ahead. John Perry. Yeah. 
On this, I would like to um, skip this. Oh, All right, John. All right, All right let's again? go to Cassandra Smith. All right, Cassandra. John, you don't want to try this one? Cassandra's mic is on mute. Go ahead, Cassandra. So, so, um, so for the last question, I didn't get what you guys get. I I know, and that's fine. But you you worked it out your way, right? Yes, sir. Right. So I want to know how you work it out, because I'm going to use your strategy with mine. All right. Yes, sir. So for creamy, there are thirty biscuits. How much do you think? Um. How much money do you think we made from it? And how would we find out how much money? So for creamy sure. biscuits, we, we had 30 biscuits. How do we yes, find sir. out how much money? Sir, so multiply by... By... Um, Wait, how can I By... You're on the right track. I'm listening out for the last part. Multiply it by what? We have can... a little bit of technical difficulties with Cassandra. Want right. to know if Paige wants to take up where she left off. Paige, you can type the answers in the chat to you know, boys and girls. All right, multiply it by 180. I see Devante. So, sir, multiply it by $180. All right. If I multiply 30 by 180, of course, I'm going to get 5,000. I'm seeing 54. I'm seeing 5,400. I'm seeing $15,415. But wait, but wait. these are some living, living calculators we're working with on, on, online here, Miss Simpson. They are quicker than me. All right. So that is for creamy. This is for creamy, right? So if this is for creamy, how do we find out for polys? How do we find out how much money we made from polys? I know they're typing in the chat. All right, so I'm seeing 50 times 100. 50 times 50 100. Times 100. And how much is that? How much is 50 times 100, boys and girls? Where are our living copies? Go again. Go ahead. Go ahead, Paige. Um, sir, the answer would be... Five thousand, sir. Excellent. All right, try this one for me now. How would I find out how much for extra coconut? Um, sir, to find out how much extra coconut is, you would times two hundred and fifty point seven five by twenty. Two hundred and fifty. Did you say two hundred fifty? No, I said two hundred point two five. Okay. 200 point is it, 25. Oh, is it sorry, 200, sorry. Come again. 250. Sorry. 250.75. Sorry. All right. So 200 and 50.75. And what are we doing with that number? We're going to multiply it by 20. Where did you get the 20 from? How do you know it's 20? Because the, you picked 20 extra coconut cookies, sir. All right. And what would that not figure be? One second. 5,015. I hear the phone in the background, in a man. Working, working, working. <laughs> All right. So, 
These are the amount of money we made from selling the three types of biscuit. We have 5,400. What's 5,400 plus five more thousand? Hmm? Page, what's 5,000 plus 5,000? Page, are you still there? All right, so Devante is saying 10,400, sir. Antonio on the ball. All right, so if that is 10,400, if we add five more thousand to that, how much is that? 10,400 plus 5,000. If, all right, I want the sum of all three. And if the sum of all three, if I add them, what do I get? Somebody is saying it. 15,415. I'm seeing that in the chat somewhere. Excellent, boys and girls. So we have, made, we have made $15,415 from our sale of biscuits. All right. Now, based on what you choose, boys and girls, you may have sold it for more or you may have sold it for less. But guess what? You would still have to do the multiplication of the number of biscuits times the selling price, what you're selling it for. And that would be remain the same. So you're on the right track just the same if your answer is a little bit different from mine. All right. So as we continue... This now is section D. It says using the money you made from the sale in week one, we want you to buy as many packs of the same types of biscuit you chose, right? So we're going to sell in week two again. So we say, all right, this is the money that you make now, 15,415. Use that money to buy as much packs of biscuit as you can, right? And so we are going to be doing that. Now, in this case, we have to know how much biscuit, which biscuits we are going to be buying. And guess what? We're buying about the same biscuits, the butter biscuit, the extra coconut, and Polly's biscuit. How could we leave our Polly biscuit when almost everybody likes Polly biscuit? All right. But in this case, we're not looking at the selling price because to get the biscuits, it's going to cost us. And if it is going to cost us, we have to know the cost price. All right. So let's go. We need to know the cost price. So, so Renika Jones is, is sharing yes, this ahead. time you will divide. So she needs to be a little bit clearer. I'm seeing Renika in the chat saying this time you will divide. Not seeing anything else in the chat, but I'm seeing persons who would like to open their mic. So I'm going to invite Delicia um, Wilson to unmute and speak. All right, Delicia. Delicia? Go ahead, Delicia. Delisa, how many biscuits you would want to buy? How many creamy biscuits you would want to buy this time around? The last time we, 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 we said 30. How many biscuits you want to sell this time around? Hmm? All right, um, Delisa seems to have disappeared. Let's go to Chelsea. Chelsea Chambers, her hand is up. All right, let's go, Chelsea. Sorry, I can um divide. Divide. Sorry, I can um add take off some of the biscuits you would sell for the extra coconut. 
to the poly um biscuit sir then you divide all of the all of the money biscuits and and then you'll have your answer all right that's what you did so out of the fifteen thousand here which biscuit are you going to buy the most all right, Kimani spends his hand is up. Let's hear from him. Kimani. All right. So the responses are not forthcoming at this time. But boys and girls, don't be shy. Let's continue. Patricia Gabidon is saying polychocolate digestive. Um, right. we're, we're still using the same three biscuits but guess what boys and girls we have here a, a sample just the same so we are saying to you all right the last time we bought 30 50 and 20. so now that we have more money now that we have more money it means that we can buy more biscuits. So think about it. The cost price for the cost price for creamy biscuit is one twenty. So it's going to cost us one hundred and twenty dollars and fifty cents for one. So we can try some numbers. So we are saying if you try thirty this time again, it means you are going to be it's going to cost you three thousand six hundred and fifteen dollars right but how much money you are going to make from it so when you spend three thousand six hundred and fifteen dollars right are you seeing on screen here are you seeing my mouse on screen are you seeing my mouse on screen Yes, sir, we are. All right. Good. So you see my mouse on screen here. So when you spend 3,615 out of your 15,000 and something dollars, you are going to actually, when you sell them, you're going to do what? Make 5,400. And let's say you bought extra coconut biscuit, some some more, you bought a whole lot more. So you bought 44 this time. You are going to spend $8,811 for those 44 biscuits. But guess what? Remember, every time you're selling the biscuits, you're making a profit, you know. So what would I sell it when I sell all my biscuits at $250, 75 cents? I'm going to make $11,033. Is that more than what it costs us? Mm, of course it is. 11,000 is greater than 8,000. And 5,000 is greater than 3,000. So we are making profits. Let's say we chose Polly's Digestive. And we know Polly Digestive, you know it. Probably people like polydigestive because it's cheaper or is because it tastes good. You have to decide. So this time we bought 50 again because most people prefer it, you know, so we have to sell it a lot. So we bought 50 of it, but it cost us $3,002.50. But when we are selling it back, we're selling it for $100 each. So we made 5000 Boys and girls, if we made 5000 in week two, after selling the biscuits, we are going to make a total of $21,433. All right. So if you made that in week two, we need to find out how much money we made as profit from where we started. Because remember, we spent off all of the money. You know? And boys and girls, if when you do the calculation and you make a little mistake, we're not going to kill you for it, you know. 
we want to see how how you extend your thinking if it is consistent. Because even if you multiply something, I make a little mistake. We we see which you know. But take your time and follow through with the processes, right, and the procedures that you need to use. So again, we want to find out the profit. And in week one, we made some money there. In week two, we made that money. But in order to find out our profit, we have to subtract the monies from week two that we made in week one. So if I were to subtract 15,400 and something, that's something, from 21,433, how much would your profit be? Who is trying that one? I think we're going to have to give a gift to the student who, who answered this one in a teacher. How much profit would I make? Well, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Let's see who want Kira Miller. Her hand is up. So I can ask Kira, Kira to unmute. So our profit is the difference between week one and week two. What is our profit? Kira Miller. Oh, I'm seeing the chat lighting up, Mr. Williams. Arlene right. Johnson is saying, Arlan J, $6,005. Renika Jones, $6,004.50. I'm seeing um, $4,005. All right. Those are the responses I'm getting. All right. Excellent, boys and girls. So some of us may have made a little mistake, but at least you know what you're doing. You have to subtract. The 15,000 something from the 21,000. So, for those of who don't know how to do the subtraction, we have to get some help tomorrow, right? So, you go back to school and say, Miss, can you help me out to subtract this, right? And I'm sure teacher would be so happy that you came for that so, and um, you came for that support, right? Now, let's see the earnings. If you said the profit is $6,004.50, you are correct, Rajan. Rajan, big up yourself, man. Which school are you representing, Rajan? Big up yourself and big up your school. Good going. All right. So you made $6,004.50. Now, if the same amount of money so boys and girls, you made a profit of 6,000. Let me commend you and big you up for selling your three types of biscuits and making a profit of $6,004.50. Holy for money that, you know. Holy for money that. But you have to remember now, say it's $50,000 we need. So much more. How much more weeks we need to, to sell biscuit for to make $50,000? We only have 6000 so far. So much more weeks. Let's go through. So in week one, we made $6,004, right? Initial profit that, 50 cents. But in order to reach $50,000, boys and girls, we have to do repeated addition. We have to just keep adding the profit we would continuously make, right? Right? Or you can do repeated subtraction, or you can do division, because we want to find out how many additional weeks. We don't want to say how many weeks we'll get to 50,000, you know. How many additional weeks? So you have to exclude week one, and how many more weeks we need to sell biscuits to get to our target of 50,000. Boys and girls, if it's under 50,000 when you add it up, you know, it means that you have another week to go, right? Or if you go over 50,000 a little bit, it's still fine because when you sell it, you, you're making a profit of 50,000 or more. You have to bear that in mind. So we can't sell less than 50,000 because the challenge is 50,000. So it must be 50,000 or more. All right. I'm seeing person saying eight weeks. 
eight more right. weeks, eight more weeks. Somebody say nine weeks. All so, right, all yes. right, all right. Let's see if they're really correct. So if in the first week we made $6,004, the initial period, right? I'm going to use a technique of repeating the pattern. And I'm repeating the pattern on, on just a number line to show week one, week two, and so forth. So in week one, after our initial week, it would be, so adding $6,004 to that 12,009. In week two, it would be $18,013.50. Week three, adding another 6,000 to the 18,000 there is $24,018. In week four, Boys and girls are fine. You're picking up the pattern. Add another six thousand and four dollars and fifty cents. What we get? Thirty thousand twenty-two dollars fifty cents. In week five, we're still not at our target yet. Remember what our target is? Fifty thousand dollars. So we are still there. Thirty-six thousand and twenty-seven dollars. Are we at our target yet, boys and girls? Hmm. How many more weeks do you think we need to go? We need to sell biscuits. Wooly, but biscuits we have to sell in a month. How much more weeks we have to sell biscuits before we make up the money? Because I really want to play the netball and football. You know? I know the girls want to play the netball and I know the boys want to mash up some it, some some goalie in you know, a man. The chat is saying so, four and three weeks. I seen four weeks, three weeks. Right. In the chat. How many more weeks? Add another 6,000, we reach 42,000. Add another 6,000, we reach 48,000. So boys and girls, we reach seven more weeks. We reach the target yet? Hmm. What do you think? Thinking about it hard, you know. I wonder if I sell enough biscuit now. Oh. Miss Sims, you think I sell enough biscuit? Think I reached my target of 50,000? No, you still have a little way to go. All right. Let's see how far I need to go. All right, boys and girls. Let's see. In week eight, if I add six more thousand dollars in profit, money I'm making in week eight is $6,004.50 again. How much money I've got now? $54,040.50. Have I reached my target or I need to continue? Let me continue because I don't reach a target yet. Boys and girls, you think I reach a target yet? In week nine, $60,045. Persons are saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Someone right. is saying, I was right. I was right. Okay, beautiful. All right. Now that you're seeing it on screen, how many more weeks you needed to sell biscuit for to reach the target? Type your answers in the chat. So I'm seeing eight. Eight, eight is coming across. That's the dominant right. answer at this time, Mr. Williams. All right. Eight Excellent, right. boys and girls. If you eight said right eight across. weeks, if you said eight weeks, for those of you who are on YouTube and our Zoom platform here, if you said eight weeks and you're following through with us, you are correct. Well done. Good job. All right. So, of course, it is eight weeks. We can even use a table to show you. So if every week we made $6,004, by we reach week eight, we realize that we got $54,040.50. Boys and girls, terrific job you have done so far. You have demonstrated that you have the competence, you have the willingness to learn and to demonstrate to us that you are ready to mash up every exam that's coming your way. All right. I want you to, to remember some stuff, boys and girls. You see, with task-based assessment like these, we want you to be able to read the prompt and the instruction carefully. You have to pay attention to details, all right? Must pay attention and the important information. 
Sometimes we underline them for you or put them in bold. And sometimes you have to circle them or put them in bold for yourself or underline them, right? We want you to always recognize that the information you're using with every task, sometimes you may have to look back. You have to go back for, for some of the answers, right? Like some of us said, sir, probably have to go back to the bar chart to see why I chose this. Or sir, I have to go back to the table to know why I am choosing this biscuit, all right? Very good. It's always look back because information that goes before is important for the information to come, right? And finally, we want you to always think of the goal that is set above the task. So sometimes we say, okay, make a budget, create a bar graph. Those are what you focus on. That is what is required of you this time. All right, always pay attention to details, boys and girls. And I want to thank you all, 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 all. Manchester and St. Elizabeth, good job, good going. I believe we have come to the end of our session. And uh, it was truly an honor to have you all here with me today. Boys and girls, big up yourselves. And for those of you who are on the YouTube platform, just subscribe to the page so you can get all of this quality information after all. This is our number one virtual space for Region 5 students. Tune in, join in with us. Subscribe to our, our Facebook page and our Instagram page as you are seeing on screen. And as we complete our session today, boys and girls, I wish you all the best in your exams to come. And be safe, be good, until next time.